The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. Welcome to the Sample Chapter Podcast, the show where authors read a sample chapter from one of their books. Here's your host, Jason A. Meiske. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sample Chapter Podcast. As that lovely lady said out front, yes, I am your host, Jason A. Meiske, thriller author and your co-pilot on these episodes. Hey, this is episode 188, and uh, we're having a wonderful chat with a debut author, Steve Clark. Uh, Steve and I had a great chat. Uh, You're going to love all this. You're going to hear some really great stuff about him. Uh, but he is a wannabe rock star turned author. One of the things I've, I've always loved talking with authors is how, you know, a lot of times we have all these other creative outlets, whether it's music, whether it's art, whether it's, so, you know, all these other things. And, uh, but with authors, it's always the, you know, writing is the one thing that always calls us back. And uh, Steve was no exception to that rule is that he is someone who's always been searching for that creative outlet but always writing and uh now it it, uh the writing called him back and now he's here today with his his first novel which is an anthology of chilling uh short horror stories called the collapse of ordinary wow it is a really chilling collection of short stories uh you're gonna hear one of those today that just kind of makes you shiver a little bit once (laughs) once you realize what is happening But we're also going to be talking to Steve about the podcast and writing community and how accessible and helpful they are. Uh, We're hearing about his, uh, his, actually his debut story that he wrote for Matt uh, Wildestein's anthology. I'm sorry, Matt. I know I'm butchering your name. (laughs) Uh, Dark Words came out earlier this year, which there's a link for that in the show notes as well. He's doing his first reading today and... You know, over everything, I gotta say, I really like his attitude. You know, and we talk a little bit about this, which is that that attitude of, you know, when one if one person can do it, so can another. You know, and if this person's writing a book and I really like it, why can't I try and do that too? Why can't I be capable of doing it? And it's a fantastic attitude. I love that that drive that he's got to uh, go ahead and give it a try. And uh, yeah, and, and he's he's doing quite well. I mean. Like I said, this is his second release this year. Uh, the first one, like I said, is a was a short story in a another anthology, but then now this is his, uh, his own release coming out. And uh, the book is actually coming out on the 20th of August, uh, so next week. But, of course, everyone knows if you're listening to this right now, then that means the pre-order is up and available. So make sure you go ahead and click that link in the show notes to go over and grab a copy of it for yourself. It looks fantastic. And, uh, of course, you know, you're going to hear one of those amazing stories today. All right, well, <laughs> I'm a little off today. I feel like I'm just kind of rambling some. So let's let's just move on to the next thing. Uh, next on my to-do list is I want to uh, I wanted to share a little bit of news, which is uh, last week I had told you all that I was working on Working on the cover art for my upcoming release of the Bandit Chronicles, and holy cow, how fast things move from there. I have the cover art. It is ready, and it looks amazing. I'm so thrilled with it. Uh, So this is uh, book one of the Bandit Chronicles. It's called Bandit Rising, and this is our introduction to the character of Bandit and uh, you know how Earth is five, six years after aliens have invaded. And uh, I think right now, that's all I'm going to say right now. If you've been following the show for a while, you've heard me talk about the story before. But for right now, that's all I'm going to share. I will share more as it's coming out. And uh, I will also let you know as soon as I share that artwork. Because uh, will, I will have that up on my own personal Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, Plus, I'll probably share it on my website as well over at jasonamiske.com. Well, you know what? Whenever I do share that on those other places, I'll make sure and tag the show. So that, that way, if you're following the show only, then uh, you'll be able to to check out that art. Because it's fantastic. It really, really is fantastic. And I can't wait to share it with you. Uh, the editing for the stories are going really good. I'm having 
a wonderful time. I've, I've crossed the halfway point on my final edits, and the plan is right now to get done with that before the end of this month, so that way I can hand it off to some beta readers and my editor, so that way uh, throughout September I'll just be waiting on them to hear back from them and make any necessary changes. And then the plan is, by October 1st, I uh, hope to have the pre-order up and available, and then the book will be ready to go mid-October. So stay tuned, and uh, I will make sure and share the news with all of you all whenever each of those stages are ready. So as you heard last week, um, I will be at Planet Comic Con coming up August 20th through the 22nd. On Friday the 20th at 4 p.m., I will be up on one of the stages talking to actor Spencer Wilding. You may know him from movies like Guardians of the Galaxy, Hobbs and Shaw, Men in Black, Batman Begins, Jupiter Ascending, and of course, he is the one and only Darth Vader in Rogue One, uh, which is funny because I just watched that last night. I was like, oh, Spencer's in this, <laughs> as if I know him. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's he's got some fantastic movies, and uh, I can't I can't wait to get a chance to talk to him. We're gonna have um, I get like forty five minutes with him on stage, and a little over half of that is just he and I doing a one on one before we hand it over to crowd questions. So make sure you come to the show and uh, come on out, ask some questions, uh, check out his movie list. I'm gonna be talking about all of his movies and uh, his career. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So once again, that is on August 20th at 4 o'clock there at Planet Comic Con. Uh, I will not be there on Saturday the 21st. And right now it's up in the air. I might be coming back on the 22nd. Uh, but definitely Friday the 20th, I'm going to be all over the place uh, meeting with other authors and trying to catch up with a few celebrities while I'm there. And uh, so yeah, if you see me, say hi. I also, as I mentioned last week, I don't have a sponsor right now, and, and Audible is also still trying to figure out some of their stuff. Hey, be quiet. <laughs> My puppy Ruby is over here whining. She doesn't want to be out in the garage with me. Anyway, so yeah, Audible is still working out their troubles with links and stuff, uh, so that's going on right now, plus my uh, sponsorship deal with Scrivener is currently on hold while they do a little bit of maneuvering. They're doing some some changes at their office, and uh, we're going to be reconvening here in October. But still, I do recommend both of these services. I use them both every day. I write with Scrivener every day with all of my books, and I, I use Audible just about every day, with, uh, whether, it was, whether it's podcasts or whether it's audiobooks. And it's, it's a great service and one that I really recommend. But as for my podcast friends, I want to invite you to click that link in the show notes for Pop Goes a Culture Network, home to about half a dozen pop culture related shows, uh, shows like Fellowship of the Geeks, Multiverse Tonight, The Backlot, Alamo Draft House, one of my favorite shows on the network, honestly, uh, Two Dads Review, and of course the flagship show Pop Goes a Culture Podcast. Wonderful shows, and like I said, all of them are pop culture related. So whether you're looking at movie or TV news, celebrity gossip, or uh, you know just talking about some of their favorite things in movies and TV, uh, it's all go all going to be there and uh, some great shows for you to check out. Uh, once again, that's in the show notes. My other network I'm happy to be a part of is Project Entertainment Network, home to about 30 different shows. Uh, shows like the Lunch Ladies podcast, where they do book reviews. The Necrocasticon, which is the horror theme podcast. Monster Attack, where they review old classic monster movies. And that's another one of my favorites on this oh, network. Oh, hey, stop it. <laughs> Ruby, say hi to everybody. Um, anyway, yeah, so Monster Attack, it's another great show. Y&O, which is... Your New Opinion, I've talked about them on this show before. They are a bunch of great guys debating all kinds of uh, random topics. Uh, most recently, they did one that I requested, which is which is better, bone-in or boneless wings. So 
get on over there and check out that episode. And they said some really nice things about me, so that was that was cool. <laughs> uh, there's, of course, Bizong, the Bizarre, Wild, and Wacky podcast, uh, which covers everything in, in the writing world that is bizarre, hard at work, and so many other podcasts, so much more than I can go over right now. But what I will do is play an ad for one of those incredible shows right now. The Necrocast Tick On, where we blend horror and heavy metal for your pleasure and ours. Featuring interviews with the stars of heavy metal, horror, and more. With host speculative fiction author and journalist Thomas R. Clark, YouTube sensation Mr. Scott Reacts, foodie and metal historian, smoking ward ball, the Spartan warrior, Sergeant Fury, Dan Roberts, and our guy on the couch, Uncle Skip. Because we all need a guy on the couch. Oh, and me, Charlotte, your virtual hostess. Available Mondays, wherever you find your fine-ass podcasts. Okay, well, there you go. Another one of those fantastic shows from the Project Entertainment Network. And I invite you to go and click on the link for each and every one of our friends in podcast land. And uh, check out everything that they have to offer. Some fantastic shows. Of course, you can always find and follow all of our podcast friends and the Sample Chapter Podcast on social media, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We're very easy to find, especially our show. You just search for Sample Chapter Podcast, and then click that follow link so that uh, you don't miss out on anything that we're sharing week in and week out. If you're not a social media person, but you want to check out the show, you can always go to the website at SampleChapterPodcast.com. Find links for all of our past episodes, and you can play them right from there. Uh, the show is also available on all podcast platforms. If you want to reach out to the show, you can do so through email at samplechapterpodcast at gmail.com. Let me know what you think of the show. Let me know about an author you'd like for uh, to guest on here. and uh, Or just, you know, if you have a comment, just drop me a line with that way. Of course, you can also do so via voicemail by calling one six six zero eight five one 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 four six and as always the fun voicemails are, are going to be played on an upcoming episode well hey without further ado i think it's time to take ruby back upstairs so that she can play with uh with the kids <laughs> and meanwhile we're going to get on over to our guest steve clark with the collapse of ordinary Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of the Sample Chapter Podcast. Oh my goodness, this is a, this is another exciting episode for me. You know, and I say that all the time, exciting. It's exciting, it's exciting. Well, it is exciting because one of my favorite things to do, as, as you know, for those of you who have been listening for a long time, one of my favorite things to do is to talk to authors who are debuting new books, or their first book in this case. And today is no exception to that. My guest is Steve Clark. And to quote his uh, Twitter page, he's a horror author, a book lover, husband, father, and guitar picker. How cool is that? Steve Clark, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. I am excited to be here. I'm so happy to have you here, man. I'm glad this worked out. And, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I, I don't know how long we've been following each other, but we're both fans of... Uh, of, of like one of our favorite shows, The Mondo Method. And uh, when I heard your mid-year updates on there and how your writing year was going, and you talked about how you wanted to be on a podcast, you couldn't wait to be on one. I was like, oh, dude, I got to I gotta reach out to Steve. This is awesome. And uh, I couldn't wait, man. I'm so glad that you, uh, that you answered and was excited to come on. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that was one of my goals was to be on a podcast. And I actually didn't even know that the episode had aired yet. And then I saw your message. Oh, man. Like, <laughs> just worked out perfect <laughs> oh that's cool well so give us a little bit of a uh, little bit of background about you when did you start writing yeah so i when i was young i, I was always a reader and i i would re tinker here and there a little bit of stuff but i never did anything seriously and then through most of my teenage years and my 20s i wanted to be i didn't re really want to be a writer i wanted to be a rock star so that guitar picking thing and uh so I, I did the band stuff for a while 
and then uh, that wasn't it wasn't really realistic. I mean, I've, I'm married, I have three kids, work full time, so it just that lifestyle wasn't really for me. And I always kind of kicked back a little bit just to thinking about the writing gig and something that I'd always thought about doing and never really gave it a, an honest go. And then a couple years ago, I, uh, I'd actually just gotten into podcasts. So I had never even listened to one before and I'm a bit, I'm a big horror fan. So I found the horror show with Brian Keen and I started listening to that. And this was a couple years ago. So, uh, Matt Wilson had already joined the show as a regular host, and he had just recently released his first short story collection, self-published it. And the idea of self-publishing, I knew what it was, but how functional it is now was was new to me. So I, I bought his book and I checked it out, and I mean, it was very professional. I was like, this is this is a legit book. This is a real thing, and it, it just kind of inspired me. I, I mean, this guy's doing this. Why can't, why can't I do this? It's something I've always wanted to try. So I I reached out to him, just kind of a cold uh, for DM direct message. And it's like, hey, man, uh, if you don't mind, uh, chat with me a little bit just to talk about the process and, and how you do this. I would appreciate it. He was gracious enough to do that. And, and that was kind of the beginning of it. I mean, he, he talked to me and gave me some tips. And then I just sat down and started writing. <laughs> yeah, it, that that's awesome. I mean, we, it's uh, one of the things we have in common is that kind of uh, kickstart that came really from podcasting, uh, much the same way as you. I w had always been interested in writing. I kind of tinkered with it here and there, uh, gave it a go. Oh, gosh, more than 20 years ago now, uh, back in the early 2000s, and uh, it just didn't work out. Yeah, and, then, and then here a couple of years back, uh, I was checking out some uh you know trying listening to these new things called podcasts and uh I, I stumbled upon a writing show and i was listening to them and and they were a very down-to-earth show it was called um oh they were called fanboys on fiction and uh, it's okay. it's it's an old show it's gets over now it's been over for years and it was cool and i wrote to them and they wrote back and they talk about different fan things if anybody wrote in they talk about it on the show and and it just kind of just kind of clicked with me. I was like, you know what? I want to get back into it. And these guys are giving great advice. And so I got back into it. And then, yeah, next thing you know, I'm, I'm got my uh, my first book about about a year or so after that show ended. But I still am in touch with with the guys from that show, and uh, they're friends of mine now. And it's it's I love the podcast uh, family. Uh, it, it's growing, and it amazes me how how many connections and and uh, new friends that you can make, uh, you know, in and out of the author world, but, you know, all still within there. Yeah, absolutely. And even in the, the short time that I've really been working, trying to network and do those things. I mean, everybody that I come across very friendly, everybody's looking to help each other out. And I mean, it's just, everybody just embraces what you're doing because we're all doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very accessible. And I think a lot of them have the same kind of um, idea that I do as well that that I believe in, which is a rising tide raises all ships. And so yep. why not why not help each other out? And that's really that was the the concept behind this show is to bring other authors on like myself when I was starting off. And you know, the, the first year I did this is when my first book was getting ready to come out. And since then, I've had, oh, gosh, dozens and dozens of debut authors like yourself and it's like, yeah, you know, let's get a foot in there somewhere and try and raise us all up and get word out that, hey, Steve Clark's got a book and you got to check this out. This is awesome. Yep. And I, it's, it's great that you do that, because especially, I mean, starting out, you have no idea where to where to reach out to and what kind of outlets you may have. So having a <laughs> platform like this where you can just get a foot in the door and maybe get a, somebody to look and say, hey, check this book out. I mean, it. It's amazing that it is just so accessible. Yeah, absolutely. So now, what uh, what kind of stories do you like to write? I know you've got uh, the horror collection, and uh, that, or do you have a certain genre that you stick to, or do you kind of go wherever you feel like? It, it is mostly horror. I've I've been a a huge horror fan my entire life. I had a an older brother who was very big into horror, and I. 
I like my earliest horror memory is watching Night of the Living Dead when I was like five, six years old. Probably way too young to be watching that, but uh, so I'm a lifelong George Romero fan. I love zombies are are my favorite movies ever. Um, but yeah, I just and I was always into reading, so I, I was a growing up in the 90s, I was born in 83, so when I really started reading and getting into stuff, Goosebumps was happening, so I was all in on that, and then and then it was just the usual uh, transition to Stephen King from there, and all the other stuff, and so it, it's all horror, I mean, it's, the collection is a split of their supernatural horror, human element horror, um, there's some, a couple little flash pieces in there, and then some longer works, but it, it all definitely fits neatly into the horror basket. Okay, well, that's cool. Well, uh, earlier this year, uh, you got a kickstart into your author career by getting a, a story put into a story of urban legends and folklore, which is Dark Words uh, by Matt Westain. And how did that come about? How did you get your story in there? So, yeah, so, so yeah, Matt Williston, I, uh, he was the one that kind of got me got me started writing when I was talking with him and then we just kind of developed a friendship over time and um, he had mentioned a few times he was thinking about an anthology and he had this idea to put put an anthology together for a bunch of new writers like me that he had he had met and talked to and um, one day he, he pulled the trigger on it decided to do it and asked me if I wanted to, to write a story for it which of course I did so he had the theme for uh, he wanted us all to do local urban legend folklore stories from where we were from so uh, including Matt there's 12 authors in the book and we're all over the country there's a couple in in England so everybody wrote a spin on some local urban legend folklore kind of thing and and that was that I mean he was gracious enough to pull me in that is so cool I'm going to read the tagline here for everybody so you can check this out uh, everyone Horror hides everywhere. That abandoned house down your street, the woods nearby, even your own home. They all have old stories and legends of ghouls, demons, and monsters. Throughout time, their stories were handed down around campfires and during sleepovers. Today, those stories will have a fresh take, but within the same dark words. And yours is in this. This is awesome, man. Uh, can, you tell us a, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit? What, what is your story? What's uh, that story about? Yeah, so um, I live in I live in Southwest Ohio, and so when he told me the theme, I started looking into what we had. I mean, I knew some things, of course, just from living here, but early on, it seemed like a lot of people were looking at ghost stories, and that was a lot of what was around here. So I had to dig a little dig a little deeper, but not too far from me, um, there is an urban legend about a, a cryptid called the Frogman, the Loveland Frogman, and. Um, mm -hmm. There was a story uh, of people seeing like a humanoid frog person um, near this river in Loveland, Ohio. And uh, it was, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of substance to the stories. I mean, it was not nearly as fleshed out as Bigfoot or something like that. But I mean, it was, it was interesting. And so I, I wrote a story called Cold Blooded that um, it's about a father and son that go camping to, uh, the son's been having a hard time. He's 13 years old, um, transitioning that, that weird time between being a kid and being a teenager. And his father takes him, takes him camping to try to just have a father son bonding trip and try to build him up a little bit. And, uh, they end up crossing paths with the frog man. <laughs> oh my gosh. That sounds awesome. Oh, wow. Well, you know, everybody, I'm going to put a link in the show notes for that as well. So you can go pick it up. That's available on Amazon. And uh, yeah, just click that link in the show notes and go, go check this out. It sounds amazing. And uh, I'm going to have to I, check I it out. In, well. Yeah. I mean, my story aside, every story in it is, is very solid. They're all so different in tone. I mean, it's a, it's a really good anthology. I would, I enjoyed it, whether my story was in it or not. I mean, I'm biased because I'm in there, but Either if you take mine out, it's still a, a solid book. So yeah, I definitely recommend people check it out. If you're into folklore, urban legend kind of things, it's very cool. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have a uh so within the horror genre, do you have a favorite um direction you like to go? Like do you like the 
prefer the body horror? Do you prefer monsters or zombies? Anything along those lines? I mean, I, I, I definitely grew up a huge zombie fan. Dawn of the Dead, the original 78 is my favorite movie of all time. But I know that zombies are pretty well burnt right now. I mean, the, the Walking Dead kind of hammered at home. So <laughs> uh, there is one zombie story in my collection. I restrained myself and that was all I did. But um, I would say if there was a weight to it, supernatural horror is probably the most recurring theme. And I like, I grew, I grew up um, really into EC comics like Tales from the Crypt and all the horror and all that stuff. And okay, I yeah. love that. I love that. Uh, yeah, and then back to like Twilight Zone and stuff too, that I love that twist ending thing that they do a lot of times. And mm -hmm. I feel like, that's pretty apparent in, in, in my writing. It, it definitely shows up a lot of the little twist. I mean, some, sometimes our, some of these stories after I read it, I can, in my head, I can almost hear the Crypt Keeper cackling in the background. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I always, I've always loved those uh, twist endings like that were something you didn't see coming. Now, and, and it's something actually I've tried to put into a couple of my books as well. So how do you go about putting that twist in there that's going to take somebody by surprise? Uh, how do you do that without advertising it ahead of time or telegraphing it ahead of time? Well, I mean, I guess the jury is out. We'll find out when the book comes <laughs> out if I'm any good at doing it or not. But uh, I think a lot of times with most of these stories, I... I go into it with an idea, but I don't, even I don't really know how it's going to go. So I, I think things kind of develop and, and I've surprised myself. I mean, I've started stories with just a core idea and, and it's completely different than I expected it to. So I try not to, uh, to foreshadow or phone it in too, too much and give it away. But I feel like just, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm unsure at the moment if I pulled it off or not. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I, I mean, given your history and, and the, the stories that you've loved in the past, I, I think a lot of that probably just kind of comes naturally where it's, you know, and, and here it is, you know, instead of a, uh, you know, the, I don't know, there, it's kind of a cop out whenever you get a deus ex machina kind of a thing, but uh, I mm -hmm. don't think you never saw that with the Crypt Keeper or some of these other stories like, like you were talking, it was always something that's like, oh, of course it's that. Oh man, right. I didn't think of that. So I, I have no doubt you, you probably pulled this off and I can't wait to check it out. And and the story that we're talking about, your debut novel, The Collapse of Ordinary, that comes out uh, coming up here in August. Uh, I think it's going to yes. be right about the time this, uh, this episode drops. So uh, give us a little more background. Like how did this, how did it come together for you? Well, I... I had started writing, um, and it took, a, after talking with Matt and all that stuff, it, it still took me a bit to, to finish a story that, like, that was the moment when, when it clicked, like, I might actually be able to do this when I finally finished a short story, and it, it took a few after, uh, attempts to make that happen, but once it did, I mean, I just I kind of, that was sort of like opening the floodgates, I, things just started coming to me, and I got a lot a lot quicker at doing it i'm still not quick at writing i'm a terrible uh schedule i can't sustain anything but but i knew i could do it and once i did it once then it just started happening and i just built up kind of a, a backlog of these stories and hmm. i i submitted a couple like contest things and and i kept going but in the end i really i just i inspired by matt and what these other um people putting their books out themselves are doing. I just, I really want to just put it together and, and get it out there. Just have that book on myself and say like, this, I made this. And I just kept working on it. I got about 30, 35,000 words worth of stories. And I think this is enough. And I, I want to put this together and do it. That's awesome, man. Did you, uh, did you have a, or do you have a favorite in there? Oh man, I've, I've got a couple <laughs> that I would, I don't know if I could pick, like picking a favorite kid. I don't know if I yeah, could do exactly. it I was going to say, it's kind of like picking your favorite kid, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, there are a couple that I'm, I'm especially fond of. The first story in the book is the first story that I finished. So I think that one will always be a, 
a special story to me and I hope we'll dig that one. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm happy with all of them. I mean, they all, they're all, they all mean something to me. So mm -hmm. I can't really say I have a favorite, but, <laughs> but there are a couple that I'm, I'm especially proud. Of. That's awesome, man. So, uh, now that you got this one uh, about to come out, uh, what, what's the release date again? It's going to be August. I'm shooting for August 7th. That's my birthday. seems like a great time to put a book out, <laughs> but I'm not, I mean, if it creeps a little past that, it'll, it'll definitely be first half of August for sure. I mean, it's just about ready to go. Um, cover art's all done. Every, I'm just finishing up formatting stuff right now. So I'll definitely hit it, but it'll be, it'll be early August. Okay. Well, you know, and everybody, you know, from the, the show's history that if you're hearing this right now, then the book is either available for preview or it just came out. So if you're listening to this, you can get the book. So you can click that link in the show notes for the collapse of ordinary and uh, start diving through some of these stories. And I, it sounds to me like it's going to be one of those that somebody's going to pick it up and they're going to start one story and they're not going to be able to put it down until they finish that one, at least one story at a time and uh, just kind of go throughout their day, whether they're at work and get nothing done or, uh, and keep reading. I hope so. <laughs> well, so, uh, so what's next for you? So I have um, what I hope will be a novella. Cause I, up to this point, I've only written short stories. So that's the next milestone. I, I want to put together a longer work. So I've started that and it's kind of, on the back burner while I get this collection done and ready to go. But as soon as I'm done, uh, that's, that's my priority. So um, I'm going to full bore on that. And if things go according to, to my plan, I will hope to have that done and out by the end of this year. So that's my, it's my goal, but, um, and I'll still write short stories and stuff along the way, just as a, just to break it up and, I'm hoping that the the novella will come together. That sounds cool. All right. It, it also sounds like uh, short stories are what you really, really enjoy. Uh, going back to that uh, <clears throat> Crypt Keeper uh, theme again. Sure. Is that uh, is that true? Is that something maybe? I, put yeah, I love that format. Yeah. I love the, the short story format. I mean, like, like I said, Stephen King was everybody's big influence. So I love the Stephen King, like Night Shift and all that stuff is is classic stuff though i like that it's i mean i don't want to say that way i guess just longer works are intimidating it's gonna be just like writing that short story i'm gonna i, I need to finish a novella or a novel to know that i can do it and and build that confidence because i mean early on that's the confidence thing is is everything like convincing yourself that you can actually do this and not listening to the imposter syndrome guy on your shoulder telling you you're wasting your time and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm still very green. So I'm fighting all that. And I know that doesn't go away. I, I see well-known authors all the time talking about, they still deal with that. So that's just something we got to get used to, but I mean, I definitely love short stories and I'll definitely keep writing them, but I don't want that to be the only thing I do. So yeah, I just got to knock that check that box and convince myself I can do it. Dude, that sounds amazing. And uh, I think you, you know, I mean, you got the one already behind uh, with dark words and that's yep. a huge boost that helps out. And then your own collection uh, dropping as of this episode. So, I mean, you're well on your way and it's nice to have those in your pocket and, and to be done. Cause that's definitely a confidence booster. And it, uh, you know, getting my first book, was great and it kind of took the weight and took the monkey off my shoulders and then getting the second one done I was like okay I can I think I can do this I think I can keep doing it who knows if it's any good but you know that's not for me to decide I like it and it, it right. sounds like you have that same mentality of like all right yeah you, you're finding your groove and uh I mean good grief you, you got you know all these short stories and everything putting together and it's gonna be your second book this year so you, you got a good start man Right. And I, and I'm, I'm in a good place where I'm not, there's really not any pressure to, to do anything faster than I really want to. I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm, I've got family and I, wor I work full time and 
I have a good job. I, I don't hate it. So, I mean, I, I'm not desperate to become a full-time writer. So this is fun. I mean, this is just something I can, I can do that makes me happy. Well, most of the time it makes me happy. Sometimes it's frustrating, but I mean, just, I enjoy write, telling stories and writing and I like the process of formatting kind of sucks. I've, I've learned that, but <laughs> yeah, but I'm getting it. I'm, I'm learning. So, but it's just, it's a, a cool thing to do and cool thing to show people. I've, I had a, just last week, I had a guy that I work with pop up to my office with a copy of dark words and ask me to sign it, which is bizarre as hell. But I mean, it's just, it's a wild thing, man. And I'm, sitting here talking talking to you on a podcast it's it's just it's fun it's something i never thought i would do and and that's kind of the theme to sort of part of the theme with the title of the collection is the collapse of ordinary i'm i've lived a normal life and just doing this doing something that i really want to do that's outside the box and not a lot of people can say they've done it i mean it's it's sort of like a collapse of ordinary and that's that's partly where I came up with that title. And then also through that, um, a lot of the stories and horror in general tends to be normal people doing regular things. And then something unexpected or bizarre happens, just that collapse of ordinary life. That's where the title that comes from. But, but that's how this whole experience has been. It's, just, it's been a, a whirlwind of weird shit happening. <laughs> Stuff that I just <laughs> never, ever expected to do. But here we are. Oh man. Well, dude, I, I wish you the best of luck. It sounds like uh, you got a great head on your shoulders and uh, you're, you're, you got a great jump start. and uh, man, I wish you all the best. I appreciate it, man. I'm so grateful to, that you asked me to come on. This has been really good. It's my pleasure, man. Wait, where can people uh, find and follow you? So yeah, um, Twitter is where I do all of my book stuff. So you can follow me on Twitter at Steve LC eight three four nine. Um that was my Twitter before. So it's not I don't have a a direct author one, but that's the one I use. And I have Facebook, but I don't really use that for book promotion or anything like that. So yeah. Twitter's the main one. Okay. All right. And I'm sure once the book gets up on uh, Amazon, you'll probably have your Amazon page there, your author page yes. so that way people can click on there and follow you and right. As yeah, well. the Amazon author page, uh, Goodreads. I'll get, I'm going to work on getting all that stuff as soon as the book is out. So, so in the future there will be more, and then I'll I'll promote that. Fantastic, yeah. And and yeah, you know, and like I said, everybody, I'm a broken record. I'm going to have those links in the show notes, so that that way you know right where to go and and to get the book and to follow Steve and and his career going forward. Steve, thank you so much, man. This has been a real pleasant chat with you and uh, a real joy just getting to hear from you and hear how all this came together. And and good gosh, man, I just, I, I'm just so happy for you. This is, uh, it sounds like you're doing fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm having fun. That's what matters. <laughs> That's what matters, man. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, time for me to step aside with my drink and cigar and enjoy this wonderful story from our guest, Steve Clark, and The Collapse of Ordinary. So yeah, from the collection, The Collapse of Ordinary, this is a story called Those That Help Themselves. The man burst into the room, slamming the door into the wall. Picture frames rattled and threatened to fall to the wooden floor of the cabin. Panting heavily, he grabbed the knob and pushed the door closed, collapsing his considerable weight against it. There were blood smears across the front of his blue and gray checked flannel shirt. As he rested and struggled to catch his breath, he could hear muffled whimpering coming from the girl in the room behind him. Dear God, what have I done? He moaned in desperation and pushed himself upright. A mirror on the opposite wall caught his attention. The face staring back at him was wild and disheveled. A deep scratch from the corner of his eye disappeared into his black, scruffy beard. He reached up and gently touched the wound, wincing at the thing of contact. His fingers came away wet and red. Oh no, he whimpered. I've done it now. How will I explain this? He staggered across the room and dropped into a rickety kitchen chair. The chair legs swayed under him but held. Still panting, he surveyed the cabinet. A small table was knocked over and the large rug in the center of the room was pulled up and rolled over onto itself. In his mind, he could see himself carrying the girl into the cabin. She thrashed frantically and one of her kicks sent the end table crashing to the floor. She reached a clawed hand up and swiped at his face. 
one long fingernail to the cold just below his eye and like cried out and twisted away and nearly fell as he tripped on the rug and dragged it halfway across the room. The man rocked steadily back and forth in his seat, replaying the events in his mind. At last, he had gotten her through the doorway and into the small bedroom. Then he had done things to her. Terrible. Oh, Jesus, what have I done? He cried out to the empty room. He could hear the girl sobbing from behind the closed door, though the gag he tied around her head muffled the noise. Chair creaked as he sprang to his feet and began pacing around the room. The cabin was small. A living room area and small kitchen formed an L shape around a single bedroom. A closet-sized bathroom completed the floor plan. It had been years since the man had been out here. His father bought the place when he retired from the steel mill. For a time, it was a regular weekend getaway for their family. When his father passed, his mother signed the cabin over to him. He brought his wife out a few times when they were newlyweds. She was a city girl and cared very little for the scenic beauty of the forest. After the last disastrous weekend, he gave up on romantic trips to the cabin, but he thought about it an awful lot. In his mind, it had become a hideaway. It was a place where he could do things without the world watching, like the things he'd done to the girl. Again, he cried out to the empty room as what he'd done replayed in his mind, grabbed a handful of hair with both hands and yanked. He walked to the front door and dropped his forehead against the wood. He felt like crying. Then he stiffened at the sound of a motor. He dashed across the room to the window. The road was a good 50 yards away, and thick trees blocked any view of the cabin, but he panicked nonetheless. What if someone saw me take her? They could have called the cops or followed me here. He stared at the gravel driveway, curving through the trees, and waited for the police car to come tearing at him. Slowly, he allowed himself to relax a bit as the sound of the motor faded away and no one came. He scanned the area surrounding the cabin for anyone on foot. His eyes stopped on the back of his car and his stomach lurched. The fucking trunk, he shouted. The trunk of his beat-up Cavalier stood wide open. Even from this distance, he could see the blood smears on the taillight. The man raced out of the cabin, crossed the small patch of yard, dry leaves crunching under his boots. He reached into the open trunk and pulled out an oil-stained rag frantically wiped the blood off the taillights, horrified by the handprints he left behind while being dragged from the trunk. When he was satisfied, he closed the lid and trudged back to the cabin. The oil rag was now dark red. Have to burn it, he thought. He was defeated. The adrenaline he felt previously was gone, and his place was a looming dread, his world collapsing around him. He would go to prison. Everyone he knew would abandon him. The man entered the cabin, closed the door softly behind him, and dropped onto the couch. He could still hear whimpering from the bedroom, but it was soft now. This made him feel even worse, and he began to cry himself. Loud, bellowing sobs filled the small building. Eventually, he regained control of himself. He wiped his eyes and pulled the phone from his pocket. Text message from his wife read, Hope you're having a good time fishing. Catch the big one. He shook his head and cleared the alert. He couldn't think about her right now. He needed help. As great as she was, she couldn't help him with this. He wouldn't understand. He swiped the screen until the familiar YouTube app touched the icon and went straight to his pride channel. The one he needed was at the top of the list. The channel was called Becoming the Best You. A blue dot on the page icon indicated a new video. Thank God, he whispered and tapped the screen once more to start the newly uploaded video. A pretty blonde girl in workout attire jogged down a suburban street. In the background, kids played in front yards, a man sprayed down as far as a water hose, and an old couple walked hand in hand on the sidewalk. The phone jostled from side to side as she ran, causing the video to bounce with each step. Hey guys, she said excitedly to the camera, welcome to another episode of Becoming the Best You. In case this is your first time joining us, my name's Brittany, and I've been helping people just like you unlock their potential to become a better version of themselves. The man smiled and nodded at the phone. First step is knowing your own heart. Whatever the thing is inside you that gets you fired up and excited, that is what you have to go after. There are all kinds of reasons people don't chase the dream. They think it will never happen. What will people think of me if I do this? How will society look at me if I step outside the box they think I belong in? Does that sound familiar? Yes, the man answered. His eyes were wide and unblinking as the girl continued her jog. Well, I've got news for you. What other people think about what you're doing doesn't matter. This is your life and you live it your way. No matter how crazy your dream is, No matter what the thing is that you need to do to make yourself whole, go out there and get it. Face those fears. Do the things that push you out of your comfort zone. Do the things that other people say you can't do. Be true to yourself and everything else will fall into place. 
a jogging girl hypnotized him. His knee bounced in rhythm with her steps, and he nodded enthusiastically. That's the lesson for today. I'm going to give you a little homework this time. I want you to think of something that you've always wanted to do, but were afraid to do it. Then I want you to take the first step towards achieving that goal. Just the first step. I think you'll find that once you've taken that first step, each step after will get easier and easier. And before you know it, you're running as fast as you can to the best you. A huge smile lit up the man's face. Until next time, keep working and, and doing all the things that make you happy. Every step, you are becoming the best you. Bye. The video ended, and the man let out a deep sigh. He scrolled down to the comment section of the video, half the box, and I Brittany, I am a huge fan of your channel, and I just want you to know that you are helping me. I was afraid to chase my dreams because of what everyone would think. You've taught me it doesn't matter what people think, and I have to live for myself, so I'm doing all the things I've thought about but never did. I'm doing it all because of you. Thank you so much for helping me become the best me. Feeling rejuvenated, he stood and put the phone back in his pocket. He walked to the bedroom door and pushed it open. The girl was where he'd left her, wrist tied to the iron headboard. Her feet were loose, and she pulled herself into a tight ball. She had worked out of the gag, which now hung limply around her neck. She stared up at him with terror in her eyes. Please let me go, she begged. Despite her fear, she held his gaze. Why are you doing this? The man smiled at her. I'm chasing my dreams, he replied. He turned and closed the bedroom door behind him before turning his attention back. As he spoke, he pulled the hunting knife from his back pocket and flipped open the blade. Don't you see? I'm becoming the best me. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, there you go, everybody. That was Steve Clark reading a very chilling short story from his anthology the collapse of ordinary and that was certainly nothing of the ordinary uh hey that book is available right now for pre-order comes out on august 20th so click that link in the show notes to find the book and uh, of course uh, i have links on there for his twitter page as well there's also a link to the other short story collection that he's in dark words by matt wildesting and of course we have links to our podcast friends in the show notes as well so get on over there and check all of them out and then don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out next week when i'm back with a new author a new book and an all new sample chapter take care everybody see you then this has been a presentation of the project entertainment network